What are fields? What are all these nodes that only have outputs like position and normal? What do they do and how do they work? Maybe some of you think you know the answers to these questions. I definitely thought I did until I started researching for this video. Here's a quick summary of what this video will cover. First, I'll talk about the two main types of nodes that Geometry Nodes uses and the different socket shapes. Then I'll use some examples to explain what fields are and how they're different from attributes. After that, I'll talk about situations where you might want to use the field nodes. I'll show how to use the capture and transfer attribute nodes. And last, I'll show how to make one shape morph into another. All right, let's get started. So in this video, I'm using Blender version 3.2. And if you haven't used geometry nodes before, I recommend watching this video first to get comfortable using them. The video you're watching now is more about explaining concepts that I touched upon in that video. So according to the documentation, there are two main types of nodes. We have data flow nodes, and we have nodes that deal with field data. Data flow nodes usually have a geometry input and output and actually change the data that goes through them. If you break the flow of data so that it doesn't reach the group output, then the node tree breaks. They'll usually be green and have circle-shaped sockets. The nodes that deal with field data will have diamond sockets, and as a general rule, you usually won't be able to plug a diamond into a circle. There are some exceptions, like if you set a texture node to be one-dimensional, then it works in some circle sockets. Math nodes also work with circle sockets, as long as you aren't using them to mess with field data. Okay, what are fields though? So I looked at the documentation to see what Blender says about fields, and it says that a field is a function. So I looked up function, and a function is a chunk of code that you can use over and over again, rather than writing it out multiple times. Okay, so what does that mean in Blender though? Let's use position as an example. There's a difference between position as an attribute and position as a field. The easiest way to explain this is with the spreadsheet. We can use a viewer node to look at attributes from any part of our node tree. Okay, so in this example, we have a grid right here and a cube, and we're joining them together with a join geometry node so that we can actually see both of them over here in our scene. So to use a viewer node, you just want to select one of your nodes and hit control shift and left click and that will add a viewer node in. You can also search for one with shift A, S, and then just search for viewer, and that will bring one up also. So now we can view information about our grid over in the spreadsheet right here. Just make sure you have this right here set to viewer node. You can see up here that we have a position attribute. This is an attribute right here, and it has a list of all of our vertices. So this grid right here only has four vertices and these are the locations of each point. So this cube right here, you can see that it doesn't have the same amount of points and all of these positions are different. The position attribute is just a list of coordinates. It's showing us where each point is. But when you use the viewer node, you can see that these two shapes have their own separate position attributes. They don't have the same amount of points and they're not in the same spot. So it makes sense that the positions would be different for each of these shapes. All right, so let's change the position of these two shapes right here. For that, we can use set position nodes. You can just drop them in for the cube and for the grid. We're going to need a position node right here. And we also want two vector math nodes set to add. So I'll put one right here and I'll put one right here. Just plug the position in like that and then plug that into the position of the set position node. And we'll do the same thing for the cube down here. This will basically let us take the position of the grid and the cube and move them around like that. So we're affecting the x-axis right here of our add node. And basically what that is doing is just adding to this column right here, the x column of our position attribute. So remember, I said that a field is a function and a function is a chunk of code that you can use over and over again. So what the position field is doing right here is paying attention to where you plug it in and then automatically getting and using the position attribute that we looked at. It's basically a little set of rules, a function that says, find the position of this shape and give me the information. There's this coding concept of getters and setters. You can think of field nodes as getters because they are getting or retrieving information from somewhere. The setter nodes usually have the word set in their name, so it's a little more clear what they're actually doing. So when you plug it in over here, it's getting the position of the cube because it knows based on where you plugged it in that you're talking about the cube and not the grid. So there's actually a way to do this with fewer nodes, and that's because the set position node right here 
actually does what these two nodes are doing all on its own. So let's actually just delete these right here. That's what this offset option is doing. It gets the position from the geometry that's plugged into it, and then it adds to it. It's basically doing the same exact thing that we were doing with the nodes that we were using before. So then why do we need this position node if it's already built into the set position node? Well, if you want to do something other than adding to it, then you'll need it for that. For example, you could multiply the position right here to get this scaling effect. It's basically taking all of the numbers in our position attribute over here and then multiplying them with this number right here. Also, not all of the field nodes will have setter nodes that match, like a lot of the curve nodes. If you want to see what curves are all about, you should watch this video after. I'll put a link down below. You can also use other fields with this too, like the normal node. The normal is going to find the direction that each vertex is pointing. If we use a noise texture and plug it into here, it's adding the noise to the position and everything will push in the positive direction. If we multiply the normal and the noise, everything will be pushed outward in the normal direction. This is basically doing what the displacement modifier does. There's a lot more you can do with this, but that's a topic for another video. Another powerful thing that you can do with the position node is get the positions from different shapes and mix them together. So like I said, this will get the position automatically based on where you plug it in. So what if I wanted to set the position of the icosphere to be the same as this cube? That's when you'd either use a capture attribute or a transfer attribute node. Notice that the capture attribute has a geometry input and an output. You do have to use both of these sockets for it to work properly. So you can use it right here to capture the position of this icosphere right here. And now this socket will always return this position attribute information up here. Just make sure that you have this set to vector. If you try to use a capture attribute right here to capture the position of the cube, we have nowhere to send this geometry to. And so the data flow stops. This is a situation where you would use the transfer attribute instead. You can see that it doesn't have a geometry output, so we don't run into the same problem. And we can use it pretty much the same way that we use the capture attribute over here. Just plug in the geometry right here and plug in the attribute. And this socket will output the position of all of the points of this cube right here. Now let's mix these positions together with a mix RGB node. It might seem weird to use this node since we aren't working with color, but it works for our vector data here too. A vector is just a series of numbers, and in Blender, it's usually three numbers. So for our position, we have an X, Y, and Z number, and with color, we have an R, G, and B number. As long as it's three numbers, Blender should see it the same way. If you want to learn more about data types other than vectors, there's a link to a list of them in the description. So let's plug these attributes in now, and we can plug this into the set position. And now this factor slider will switch between using the position of this cube and using the position of the icosphere. And we can do this with pretty much any shape as long as there are enough, you know, points to work with. So for example, I have a Suzanne model right here. We can just drag it from the outliner over here and replace it with our icosphere. We just plug the geometry in like that. And now this will let us morph between Suzanne and a cube like that. As always, you can download this file from Patreon along with all of the project files from my other videos. Over there, you can also watch my videos before they're public, get coupon codes for free products, and get access to files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. Links for everything are in the description. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.